Some of you may have seen on today's news that a really big diamond, 110 carat, that's really very unusually large, has been sold for over $12 million. You may have seen the price of $10.9 million, but that forgets the extra amount of money that the buyer has to pay. So altogether, the person buying it has paid out $12.6 million. And we don't know who it is because it was an anonymous bid. But the thing which is interesting from the point of view of chemistry is that the diamond was yellow. And most of us are used to seeing diamonds, if we see them at all, as being colourless because they just contain carbon. Why should diamonds have colour? Diamond has a fairly straightforward structure in which these black carbon atoms are joined together so they make a very rigid structure. And it's a three-dimensional structure. You can see if I turn it over, it looks much the same. What happens in coloured diamonds is that a very few atoms, perhaps one atom in a million or a very small number, are exchanged for another element. In the case of yellow diamonds, it's nitrogen. So imagine that one of these carbon atoms, say this one, is changed into a nitrogen atom. Carbon atoms have four electrons in their outer shell, which is enough to form four single bonds, which you need for the structure. Nitrogen has an extra electron. It has five electrons in its outer shell, so that if you put in a nitrogen atom, you have a spare electron. And that spare electron stays associated with the nitrogen atom, but because it is not in a bond, it has different energy levels that it can occupy in the atom. You could imagine this as being different distances from the nucleus. If you shine light onto the nitrogen atom, the electron can absorb light and go from one energy level to another. And so what you're actually seeing is the absorption due to this odd electron in the nitrogen atom. There's another sort of diamond where instead of having nitrogen in, you have the occasional boron atom. Boron has one less electron than carbon, so you don't have enough electrons to make the bonds. So in effect, you have a hole. Or you could imagine there's a spare electron on the, one of the carbons nearby. And the result is that you get a different colour. The diamond looks blue. I've never seen a blue diamond, but that's what I'm told. The diamond is so expensive because it's quite rare. It's rare, first of all, because it's a big diamond, and then it's also rare because it's yellow. So you've got it twice rare, if you like. And when something's rare, the price is really depends on how many people want it and how rich they are, and they will go on battling it out in the auction till one of them wins. The reason why diamonds are rare is because you need very high pressures to make them. And it is now possible in the lab to make a diamond using very high pressure. And, but it's difficult to make them large, and the equipment is so expensive that the value of the diamonds you make wouldn't pay for the equipment you started with. And industrially now people make very small diamonds which can be used for all sorts of machining purposes to make cutters that will cut through very hard materials. But they are not of the optical quality that you need for a jewel, that is, they look black. They don't have this beautiful, transparent colour. In nature, the diamond, like the one that's just been sold, have grown under very high pressure, deep underground, over a period of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years. And when you're working in the lab, trying to make something, you don't have much that much time, so you can't grow things really slowly so that you get them almost perfect. If whoever bought this diamond gave it to you with the proviso you couldn't sell it, what would you do with a giant yellow diamond? Well, I think the first thing I would do 
is to try and record its spectrum to find out why it's yellow. And then, particularly if I let Neil get his hand on it, we'd probably end up burning it because that would be a fitting event for such an exciting object. It's best done by heating the diamond and plunging it into liquid oxygen. How many views do you think we'd get of a YouTube video in which we burned that super expensive diamond? We would get a lot of views, but a lot of people would be very cross with us. <laughs>